do you ever experience writer's block, and how do you deal with that? <laughs> I, it's again right now. It's a different thing. It's I and I feel the nice thing about television is it puts you very much in, in touch with the craft of writing, and uh, uh, it's just a different uh, because the you have to produce so much volume. Um, it's a different kind of situation because we make on Saving Hope we make eighteen episodes. And you have many people who write them, but you rewrite and such. So you actually have to f tap into a kind of like constant, you know, for better or for worse, like engagement with the material, which is not always good, though. And it's very similar. And I feel like um, I have had writer's block, but usually writer's block is is just that you haven't figured, like it's a not having figured something out. I think. And mm -hmm. I feel like I think of like when uh, when. I was in theater school, and I think of like Sheldon did an exercise where you'd like imagine an empty room, and I feel like you create, uh, and then anyway, it was, I don't know if you still do, but it was a very useful exercise, and I feel like you, the more you write, the more you, the more for me you create an engagement with a kind of like other space where you go to write, and that I feel like that engagement with that space has been very constant for me lately, and I find it very gratifying. Hmm. I think that I just sort of try and do something else. So I try to maybe work on more than one thing at the same time. So like right now, I'm working on two projects at the same time. So I get stuck someplace where it's not a matter of like sitting down and actually writing on paper. If it's a matter of like reading a book or um, about the subject of the play or um, <coughs> you know, watching a documentary or just trying to find another way to get at what's exciting or if it's about drawing the character or like just engaging in a different way of, of writing to actually get back to the writing down on paper or going to a different project. And then it seems exciting because the other one you hate because you're like, you can't do it. I hate this. And like, this is amazing. <laughs> and it's mostly You like because. to cheat on your project. Exactly. You know, it's wait, amazing because. Wait till they find out about each other. <laughs> it's amazing because it's not the one that you're stuck on. So I, that's kind of a way that I find to, you know, to help that process. Yeah, I'm, um, I don't find that tension helps. Um, or bang, punishing yourself or banging your head against the wall when you're stuck. So what I started to do, as soon as I would get stuck, I would just stop and go for a walk or something. Because um, I wanted to generate movement. Uh, if I were stuck uh, creatively, then I wanted my body to move so that something was in flow. And I got good enough at that so that when I would feel stuck and I'd start to get up out of my chair, um, I would then have an idea because uh, the freedom, it was going, okay, I know you're going to go for a walk, gonna, we don't have time for that. And, and, and then the idea would come because, again, uh, I found a way to get rid of the um, pressure and tension and just in, allow the, as Morwen said, sometimes you're just a little ahead of yourself and you don't, you haven't, you don't know how to solve it yet. So you can't force it, just accept it. But I would like to tell a little anecdote, if I might. Sure. Please. Um, and I, th I think, unfortunately, many of my students have heard this one. But when I was living <clears throat> in New York, um, and I had lots of time to daydream, I was sitting on a park bench. And th that was at the time when the blank page was the enemy of the writer, not the blank screen. And I remember sitting there, and in my imagination, uh, a, a fantastic healer, hypnotherapist, psychiatrist named Milton Erickson came up to me while I was sitting on the bench and he said, Sheldon, you've got to go hand out blank paper. And I thought, oh, okay, if you say so. And normally I would, if something came as an idea, I would then imagine the result of it. But I said, no, no, this is Milton Erickson. And so I, I bought a ream of paper, went to 72nd and Broadway and started handing out blank paper to people. And uh, I, I had no plan. I mean, I said initially, I'd say, well, I'm just curious to get people's reaction to being handed a blank paper. And people would accept it. And occasionally, someone would say, oh, you gave me a blank one, and I'd apologize and give them another <laughs> one. Um, and then um, this one woman, fairly intimidating, said, well, what's this for? And, and out came, oh, it's for good luck. Folded it up, put it in her purse. So I started saying, it's for good luck. And in my head, I thought, oh, I should tell them to meet me back here next Tuesday to tell me about their good luck, but I, 
Unfortunately, I didn't. I had one guy take one, come back five minutes later, say, I don't mean to bother you, but can I have one for a friend? And I thought, wow. And, and so th then about two-thirds of the way through the process, this severely educated looking woman approached me. And she said, well, what's this for? And for some reason, I reverted again to, well, I'm curious to get people's reactions to being handed a blank piece of paper. She said, well, you've seen my reaction. Take it back. And I took it back. I said, and it's for good luck. And she pulled it back. <laughs> to me. So I handed it out. And the moral of the story was, and this is, I actually tell this to my first year students, the creative expressive act is kind of an act of faith. And if you have that faith in yourself, something will come out of you that will take a blank whatever and empower it with who you are, what you believe, or what you imagine. And that, that's what we're going to be doing over the next four years. And in this case, it was really, really silly. It was, it's for good luck. And the, the blank piece of paper became really powerful. So that's my writer's block story.